Hey, welcome back. You're listening to Chicago Children's Theater's latest radio play. Welcome back to X Marks the Spot, Episode 3, Saturday Morning Cartoons. This show was designed with and for the blind or visually impaired community. Melody, a character in this play, has a visual impairment, uses a cane to get around, and reads and writes using Braille. As always, we invite you to dim the lights, close your eyes, and join us on this adventure. Last time, we met the Sand Fairy and Foxy McGroovy. Let's see what the Otis children have in store for wish number two. The Otis children wake up bright and early to the sound of Mom's vacuum cleaner. Turn, Turn it off! Turn it off! What time is it? Why is Mother working so early? <gasps> oh my God! What? There's no TV here. Wait, what? What about Saturday morning cartoons? <laughs> Everybody, I can cook our breakfast while you and Sky entertain the peanut. There's not much food here yet. What are you gonna cook, Melody? Uh, cold cereal. Okay, Chef. You cook the cold cereal, and Sky and I will be the TV. Peanut, you can help us. <laughs> Miss Cat, get out of my new vegetable garden. Call me Sparkles, Spot. No, you are. <laughs> Listen here, Cat. Sparkles. Okay, Sparkles. I'm going to count to five. One, Ew! two, Ew! five. <laughs> Commercial break. This cartoon is brought to you by Melody Cereal. Cereal time. Cereal time. When everybody it's cereal time, not one, not two, but three kinds of cereal in the same bowl. Now back to Wrigley Schedule Program. My secret weapon is be you, my pet skunk. Oh no, you really do stink, Peanut. Well, a skunk is no problem for me because I can fly. You can fly? That's it. Fly! Devin, where are you going? Wait up! Wait for me. The children bolt out of the house and down the path towards the beach, trying to keep up with Devin, who is so excitedly running that he doesn't even notice his siblings trailing along behind him. There it is. He finds the X. He begins to dig. He digs out the sand fairy. <laughs> it's the middle of the night! What is the reason for waking me with such an awful fright? It's morning. <sighs> okay, early morning. I'm sorry. Here, take my blanket. Hmm. Thank you. What's the wish, you? <clears throat> Uh, wish number two. So, what do you think of wishing for wings? Do you think having wings to fly back to Chicago might make for a really good wish? Oh, I suppose if one really wishes to go afar. But just remember, wherever you go, there you are. Please, please wake up. I'd like to make a wish for wings. The sand fairy puffs itself up. Melody, Sky, and Peanut hop out from the tall prairie grass where they'd been spying on their big brother. Me too, me too. Me too. We, we all want, want to fly. We all we'll wish for wings. <laughs> wish granted. At that moment, each child feels a funny feeling. Half heaviness, half lightness on their shoulders. Oh, but can we actually fly? Look out! You're treading my wing. Does it hurt? Yeah. Far out. Melody, hold my hand. We can fly together. They all spread out their wings and rise in the air. 
I see an eagle. <laughs> oh, I, 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 yeah, Peanut, you're right. I can see the Chicago skyline too. Whoa. Watch me do a somersault. I think I see a rainbow. Yeah, it is. Let's fly up into it. It's so colorful. Melody stretches out her wings and feels the cool, crisp air rippling through each of her feathers. It makes her giggle. She takes a deep breath of the freshest, cleanest air she's ever smelled, and then listens closely to the sounds that probably only a bird could ever hear. The ground looks like a colorful map come to life from up here. Oh, yeah, far out. Let's draw a map and mark the exact spot where our new house is, and then we can mail it to Dad, so when he comes home, he can find where we are. Well, we don't have anything to draw with. But we can memorize while we wait for the sunset. Hey, Melody, the lighthouse is right below us. Yeah, neat. They trace the outlines of the winding streets with their fingers till they reach the quaint little houses. Then they reach out and trace the rolling green hills until they find the warm, sandy white beaches next to the cool green waters of Lake Michigan. Tracing carefully with their fingers so they can remember the curves and grooves of every winding street leading to their house. Getting tired, they tuck themselves up under their large, soft, warm wings. Some of their feathers drop gently and silently around them. The sun slips behind the horizon, and the children's wings disappear. And there they are, on the tip-top of the red lighthouse in the dusky twilight, with blue stars coming out by ones and twos and tens and twenties, over their heads, miles away from home. We never saw this many stars in Chicago. They're so bright, I can see them too. It's late, we should go home. Now, without their wings, they begin the long climb down the lighthouse's winding stairs. Hold on to me, Melody. There's a lot of stairs here. I've got peanuts. Do you think we should be doing more to help Mom? Probably. I got it. I know what we should wish for. We have to be careful what we wish for. We only have one wish left. It's so dark in here. Melody, can we use the light from your radio? Sure. There's a jaw thief on the loose, right here in the sleepy resort town of South Haven, Michigan. Authorities believe the crooks have stashed their loot somewhere on the beach in the dunes by the lake. The president of the Lyric Opera, Mr. Irving Park, and his wife, the legendary opera diva Carmen Puccini, were staying at the Sleepy Hollow Inn over the holiday weekend when they reported a diamond tiara and other valuable jewels missing. The value of these items are in the thousands of dollars. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Sleepy Hollow? I saw a sign for that. It's right up the lake from us. Let's go to the beach first thing in the morning and see if we can find those jewels before anybody else. Thousands of dollars? We'll be rich. Right Run. on. Ha <laughs> ha Will the Otis children find the riches on the beach? Will they finally be able to move back to Chicago? Tune in next time to find out. Now that that episode's over, let's do an activity together. In this episode, the Otis children make a map of their new home. The quaint little houses, the rolling green hills, the warm sandy beaches. Because they're flying in the sky, they have to memorize their map. But we can make an actual map together. First, pick out where you want to make your map of. Is it your block? Your bedroom? Maybe your favorite park? Then pick out the key landmarks the places that everyone should know about. Now, it's time to make the map. You can draw it if you want, or you can make it out of things from around the house. Think about all of your senses. What feels like a tree? What does a sidewalk feel like? 
What does your block smell like? Once the map is ready, share it with someone in your family and take them on a tour of your favorite place.